कर वो बता चल वरना ये तली खुल के खिली है न खिलेगी तो ही नमस्कृत में नमस्कृत की सफों में तो ही तुझे शब्बीर के सजदे में देगी लेकिन इफ यू वांट टू सी तौहीद लेन कम एंड लुक टुवर्ड्स द सजदा ऑफ इमाम अल हुसैन ऑन द प्लेन्स ऑफ करबला ही विल ही विल टीच यू व्हाट इट मींस टू बी एन अब्द he will teach you do not look towards the masjids do not look towards the lines of the prayer the people who pray in the masjid but look towards that status of ubudiyah and imam al hussein is the greatest person that we can find that will take us towards that meeting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but kanbala was very later on he was teaching people way before kanbala in fact he was teaching people or he was teaching the creatures of allah before there were any humans habib ibn mazahi one day is sitting with imam hussein they have a conversation two friends habib ibn mazahi says ya hussein where were you before the creation of adam look at the question of habib ibn mazahi he does not question whether imam al hussein existed or not He says, "Oh Mola, I know you existed, but where were you before the creation of Adam?" Imam Al Hussein replies, "Habib, kunna ashbah nurin. We were all in the state of nur. Mola, what were you doing? Nadura hola alshi rahman. We were circumambulating the arsh of Allah. Then what else were you doing?" He says, "Fanu alimu. We were teaching. Mola, who were you teaching? There were no humans at that time." He says, "Fanu alimu lil malaika. We were teaching the malaika." Ya Hussein. What were you teaching the malaika? Imam Al Hussein says, "Fanu alimu lil malaika fi tasbiha wa tahlila wa tahmid." Oh Habib, we were teaching the malaika how to say La ilaha illallah. We were teaching the malaika how to say Subhanallah, and we were teaching the malaika how to say Alhamdulillah. Allah, 
وتسليما لامري and I have submitted to your command لا معبود السواك I find none worthy of worship but you يا غياث المستغيثين Oh the one who hears the cries of the one that cries out Did I understand that last sajda? Did I find a new level of ibadat? Did, do I now find a new Love when I do sajda upon that turba from Karbala. That turba from Karbala, knowing that Imam al Hussein gave everything to it, and that thing that I am now doing sajda upon is khaki shifa. Khaki shifa. What do they say about khaki shifa? They say that the person who does sajda upon khaki shifa, the earth from Karbala, it illuminates the earth seven layers down and each of those layers will bear witness for the person on the day of Qiyamah that Ya Allah this person did such that This is Khaki Shifa. Now that I'm on the topic I remember an incident there was an alim back before the revolution in Iran during the time of one of the Shahs. And he was called by the Shah. They said, look, we've got this problem. There's this person who's come over from uh, England at the time, and he claims to have the power that he can tell you whatever is in your hand. So people were coming and testing him out, and he was saying, yep, this is, that's what's in your hand. You've got a ring, you've got this, you've got that. And everyone was baffled. So the Shah calls for this alim. This alim comes and he says, what power does he have? He says, he has the power to tell you exactly what is in your hand. So this alim puts his hand within his pocket and takes out the tasbih made of khaki shifa. He holds it within his hand and says, tell me what is in my hand. The man falls silent. He falls silent and he looks at the alim. And for a while he doesn't say anything. The Shah turns around to him and says, what's wrong? Have your powers stopped working? What is in his hand? Tell us. He says, I know what is in his hand. In his hand is a piece of heaven. I'm just wondering where he got it. Oh, I'm wondering where he got it from. This is Khaki Shifa. This is the earth of Karbala. What have I learnt? Have I done sajda upon that earth and thought, Ya Hussein, you gave everything for the sake of Allah. I too will start to give my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are the followers, we are the Shias of Imam al Hussein. We are the Shias of the one they call Zainul Abideen. The one that is the treasure of the Abideen. Everyone aspires to be an Abid like Zainul Abidin. He is Sayyid the Sajjad. He is the one that is the king of those who did Sajda. No one can do Sajda like Sajjad. I am the Shia of Sajjad. Have I been able to find a new love with Ibadat? When Imam al Sajjad was once praying, they say that his house caught fire, or the place he's praying caught fire. And he's praying, he's praying. And so it says, Annar, Annar, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, fire, fire! Oh, the son of the Prophet! Nothing. Imam finishes his prayer. He turns around and sees the fire, he says, Fire! And the people say, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, we were telling you that there was fire. The house was on fire. Why didn't you hear us? He says, Why should I? I was doing munajat with my Lord. I was doing munajat with my Lord. I am not here. I am in conversation with my Lord. Nothing else matters to me. This is Sajjad. But even that Sajjad had to one day concede that none can do the ibadat of Ali but Ali. 
One day, Imam al-Sadiq narrates from Imam al-Baqir. He says that Imam al-Baqir says to me, one day I saw my father, Imam Zain al-Abidin, coming out from the masjid. His state was such that his ankles had swollen through constant qayyam. His head and his nose were bruised through constant sujood. His eyes were dry through constant crying. His skin was pale out of the fear of Allah. He came to me and I began to pray cry seeing my father in this state but my father says Muhammad Baqir do not cry bring for me the scrolls that detail the ibadat of Ali of my grandfather Ali. Imam al-Baqir says, I go inside and I bring the scrolls to my father. My father opens up the scrolls and begins to read about the ibadat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then at the end he says, ah, ah, who can do the ibadat of Ali but Ali ibn Abi Talib. What are these issues within me that stop me from getting closer towards Allah? And in fact, the greatest azadar of Karbala, Imam al-Sajjah tells us. In dua Abu Hamza Thimali, Imam al-Sajjah in part of that dua that we should be reciting during Shah of Ramadan, very recommended dua, beautiful dua. If you get the opportunity, go home and read the translation of this dua. It will blow your mind as to how the Imam is talking about my life exactly. There's a part of the dua where the Imam begins to elude towards the makr of Allah, the plot of Allah. You see what happens within our lives, sometimes when we commit a sin over and over and over, Allah takes away certain rahmas from us. Think about it before I used to have the ability, every Thursday I used to pray dua Umay. Every morning I used to get up for Salat al-Fajr, but as of late I can't get up. As of late I keep on missing dua Umay. Then I have to think, have I become subject to the plot of Allah? And then Imam al-Sajjad within dua of Muhammad al says, My Lord, every time I stand to pray to you, you cast sleepiness upon me. You cast sleepiness upon me. Because I've committed this sin so many times, Allah does not want to know me. Instead, He casts sleepiness on me, such that I'm unable to serve Him. Then the Imam says, what is wrong with me? Whenever I feel myself getting more decent, I feel my inner self becoming closer to you, something happens that throws me off the path and I return back to where I was before. And I go back. And then as you read forward, the reality dawns as to what this is. Why is this happening to me? Because I find it within my life. Every time I want to pray, I feel tired, I'll do it later. Every time I think that I'm getting more spiritually sound, then something happens and again I'm off the path. Imam Sajjad says, then next the reality, the reality of the situation. He says, my Lord, perhaps you have pushed me away from your door. He says, my Lord, perhaps you have dismissed me from your service. And then he gives ten reasons as to why Allah would dismiss a person. He gives ten reasons. He says, "O My Lord, perhaps you have noticed that I belittled my duties that you have made incumbent upon me. Thus you have set me aside. How many times do I lower the status of my namaz? How many times do I think Remember, the, everyone knows the famous hadith from Imam Sadiq that our shifa will not go to the person that does not give importance to namaz. Here, Imam Sadiq is not saying the person who does not pray namaz. He says, you can pray, but if you do not give importance to salah, you will not gain a shifa. The same thing here, Imam oh. Sajjad is saying. You're not, I'm not fulfilling the duties. You are fulfilling the duties, but you do not give them any precedence. You say, I'll pray at half-time, football match. 
I'll pray at half time. I'll pray after I finish this level of call of duty. I'll pray once I finish this level. I've just got to, you know, get to the next level and then I'll pray. I've got to finish this level of my game, then I'll pray. Imam Imam Sajjad is saying this is one of the reasons that Allah sets you aside. Then he says, He says, Oh, perhaps, oh Allah, you have seen me turning away from you. Thus, you have now turned away from me. Tawakkul 